Hi, I'm Derek Bruff, uh, Assistant Provost and Executive Director of the Center for Teaching at Vanderbilt University. And I'm here with a very brief introduction to the idea of mastery assessment. Mastery assessment involves three main components. The first is explicitly identifying learning objectives for students. The second is assessing for mastery and not partial understanding. And the third is providing students with multiple opportunities to demonstrate that mastery. And I'm taking this definition of mastery assessment from a recent paper um, from my colleagues in math education. Um, they led an entire journal issue devoted to mastery assessment in math education. This approach to assessment offers a few advantages for both instructors and students. One is that students can have a clearer sense of what's expected of them on assessments, which helps guide their study and can reduce test anxiety because they know what's coming. Instructors can have greater confidence in knowing students actually understand concepts and can apply techniques in future courses um, because they've mastered that material. And uh, assessment can become uh, a low stakes learning opportunity instead of a high stakes stressor for students. Now, let's make this concrete with an example from my own courses, Mastery Quizzes. This spring, I gave my students three mastery quizzes during the semester, which uh, covered a different set of, each of them covering a different set of learning objectives that I had listed out for the students. You can see this is one of the um, practice guides that I gave my students. I've listed the learning objectives at the top, and I've given them practice problems that they can use um, to get ready for the mastery quiz that covered these learning objectives. Uh, and here's uh, one of the quizzes, at least part of the first version of the first quiz. The first offering of each quiz was given during class, and students needed to answer at least seven of the eight questions correctly to pass the quiz. If a student didn't pass that first offering, that was okay. They could review the quiz either on their own or with me, uh, and they could take a different version of the quiz later uh, during my office hours. Students could attempt each quiz an unlimited number of times, and if a student passed all three of the quizzes, they were exempt from taking the final exam, receiving 100% on the final. This may seem like quite a reward, but uh, keep in mind two things. The final exam only counted for 15% of their students' grade in this course. It was a first year writing seminar, so there was a math component, but also some writing components. And uh, through their work on the mastery quizzes, the students actually convinced me that they knew their stuff. They had indeed mastered the learning objectives I had set out for them. Uh, in my course, all the mathematical learning objectives I planned to assess through the final exam were covered by these mastery quizzes. Um, but I can imagine other courses where just a subset of learning objectives um, were handled by mastery quizzes. Uh, in that case, you might divide the final exam into two sections, uh, one part that covers the mastery quiz material and one part that covers everything else. And then students who pass all the mastery quizzes uh, could get 100% for the section of the final that covered that material, um, but still need to work the rest of the exam um, for the other learning objectives. Mastery quizzes can greatly reduce the stress and anxiety that students feel about assessment and can do more to demonstrate mastery than um, some other options. Uh, they also support the notion that students need to master learning objectives by the time the course is ended and not necessarily um, when a particular test is given earlier in the semester. Uh, they have, you know, right up until the final exam to show that they know all this material. Mastery quizzes can foster more student-instructor interactions uh, for the students who most need help in a course by giving them a reason to come in and talk to me during office hours. And the mastery quiz approach uh, facilitates spaced practice by the students, uh, the opposite of cramming, which has been shown to enhance long-term retention of learning. On the other hand, mastery quizzes involve significantly more work for the instructor, especially at the front end. Writing multiple versions of each quiz takes some time, as does administering and grading retakes. That said, a mastery quiz well aligned with learning goals and instruction will often have more than half of the students pass it on the first try and another large proportion of the students pass it on the second try. Um, and if you have teaching assistants available to you, they can be used to help administer and grade uh, mastery quizzes. I'll end this short introduction to mastery assessment by noting the potential for this approach to assessment as an inclusive teaching practice. 
Uh, we know that uh, underrepresented and first-generation students often experience greater anxiety about tests and grades, which can inhibit performance. They also can take a little longer to develop the study skills they need for success in college teaching. Uh, and they can often be resistant to the kind of help-seeking behaviors that lead to college success uh, because sometimes their imposter syndrome <laughs> tells them that they, they need to go it alone. Mastery assessment responds to all of these factors by decreasing test anxiety, uh, giving students more time to recover from a slow or rocky start to a course, and by normalizing help-seeking behavior. I'll add that mastery assessment can be quite rewarding for the instructor, too. Um, I was really proud of my students this semester um, putting in the time and effort needed to master the course material. Um, you can see here a little snippet from my grade book um, as students kind of work their way through multiple versions of the quizzes and eventually all of them passed all of the quizzes. It was really great seeing their progress learning the material. There's lots more we could say about mastery assessment and mastery quizzes is just one way to implement that. But I think these ideas um, at the heart of mastery assessment, being explicit about le your learning objectives, uh, assessing for mastery and not just partial understanding or partial credit, uh, and giving students multiple opportunities to show what they know, um, these can be really powerful principles when we implement them in our teaching.